Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia. This is my first day back home after a four month road trip all the way to St. John's, Newfoundland. And I'm feeling a little bit sad to be back. It's that post vacation letdown, but I'm not gonna look on the bright side. I wanna talk about four problems with looking on the bright side. I actually look on the bright side naturally. I grew up with a schizophrenic mom and taught me sort of resilience and empathy and compassion for mental health problems. I was in foster homes my whole childhood. That taught me about flexibility and adaptability and being able to cope with any types of change. And infertility. My husband and I can't have kids. And I really focus on the freedom that it gives that now I have more money, time, and energy to focus on doing whatever I want. And in fact, my last video was all about seeing the good when negative things happen. And then about two days ago, I heard Eckhart Tolle on a podcast. People usually impose some kind of interpretation on what's happening around them. If you have a positive interpretation, then you are, you are closer to acceptance than when you have a negative interpretation of what's happening around you. But it's not yet, it's not really the full acceptance. You have to spin a pleasant story to make you feel good. So you are still somehow dependent on what's going on in your mind. And that made me really think about the problems with looking on the bright side. The first problem is sometimes it takes a lot of mental effort to find the bright side. So when I was in Moose Jaw and my plans fell apart, I was all focused on, okay, what's good about this? What's good? And I couldn't find anything immediately. Even with having a schizophrenic mom and being in foster homes, seeing the bright side of that can be really difficult when it doesn't seem immediately obvious. The second problem is that you have to constantly remind yourself. So for instance, if your brain doesn't naturally adapt to the idea of, oh, well, there are a lot of good things about having a schizophrenic mother or dealing with infertility. If you don't actually believe that in your mind and if it doesn't settle in immediately, then it's a constant reframing, constantly reminding yourself that there's something good about this when actually you don't really believe leave it internally. And that leads to the third thing, which is exhaustion. It's mentally and cognitively exhausting to constantly remind yourself, okay, this isn't so bad, it could be worse. That takes a lot of effort mentally and it's tiring. The fourth and final problem with looking on the bright side is that if somebody has a different opinion, say somebody that you love or really respect, and they say, you know what, that really sucks that you don't have kids, which people say that to me all the time. If they remind you of the negative, then you have to build yourself back up to thinking positively. But what if there's a deeper level? And I think there is. I think that you can go beyond just looking positively. Here's what Eckhart Tolle says. If your mind is interpreting your external conditions in a negative way, then of course you experience emotions that reflect those negative thoughts. It is not a pleasant state. You're stuck. You are resistant. And it's much less likely that you will be able to move on quickly from that situation because you are not connected with the power of life itself that is beyond the conditioned mind, that is the consciousness. A positive interpretation is better than a negative one. It takes you a little closer to full acceptance but it's not full acceptance yet your, your mind could it could change its mind quickly <laughs> so for a few days you're good with telling yourself a, a nice narrative about what's happening in your life and then you get i'm really tired of telling myself this nice narrative when i really know it isn't nice at all so it could quickly shift and you start to complain in order to become independent to become free of this reactivity to external conditions so that your inner state is no longer determined by external conditions. Your inner state is also not determined by your mind, what your mind is saying. Full acceptance is to give up to calling it good or bad. There's something that is beyond the polarities of good and bad, but, and that is transcendent dimension of consciousness. To discover that, that possibility and that reality in yourself is the most amazing thing that could happen to you in this lifetime or any other lifetime where your inner state through that absolute yes to what is which is no longer a mental thing then 
you may have seen that certain things may be needed to change the external appearance of this moment. You realize that you need to take certain steps on a practical level in order to change your external situation with which you are totally okay here and now. You're not complaining at all. In fact, there are many aspects of it that are really enjoyable because in a, when you accept the present moment, everything that you look on, there's an appreciation of the fullness of life that's always around you. The simple act of breathing, the still presence of a tree, of a plant, the still presence even of a so-called inanimate object. Everything is lovely in its beingness. There's the fullness of life around you. There's the sky, the sun, water. You've entered the vertical dimension from that deeper state of consciousness, then the very foundation is the acceptance. It does not mean you become incapable of action or that the motivation for taking action isn't there anymore. The motivation changes from neediness. Another motivation arises, and that is the motivation that the, the, the joy of manifesting something, because the universe openly enjoys it too, and you are part of the universe. You yourself are a creation of that. You are one of these life forms created by this underlying intelligence, the source of all life, God. You are an emanation of that. You can be a conscious participant in the act of the act of creation that the universe is engaged in. And in fact, I had to practice that here. I got this whole video set up. I'm all ready to go. And a couple of tourists, actually four tourists came and they were hanging out for a long time. And then they went downstairs and talked for a long time. Of course, I'm not going to say, can you go because the sun is coming up. I'm getting hot. I really want to shoot this video. I have so much to say. So I just had to wait for about 20 minutes and I practiced the present. But the bright side did keep coming to me naturally. And so I had to do the opposite of what a lot of people had to do. I had to remind myself not to look on the bright side and instead just to be in this present moment and to be glad that these people are here seeing this view that they never get to see. And I myself got to sit and just be in the view and breathe and be present in this moment. It's kind of cool and very freeing and relaxing not to worry about whether there's a bright side or a downside or a healthy side or all the different sides. And instead, it does take work to be present and just to be in the moment, but it's really freeing. Even when you accidentally look on the bright side or the downside, take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. Mwah.